Hello and welcome to a new adventure and the final part in our Leeds New Line series. Now, we're very sad about this because it's been one hell of a journey, but this is going to be the last video as we're approaching into Leeds right now. Now, I just want to introduce you once again to three people, or three people today, two which have been with us on the last few videos. We've got Richie, who's been with us since day one. Morning. We've got John, who, was, who joined us on the last part, if you remember, and also Kev, oh, yeah. who's the father-in-law from Portsmouth. Ignore him, don't worry about him. <laughs> <laughs> so we're making our way down Gelded Road and we're trying to pick up the track bed again. We're getting very close to Leeds now, but on my right over here, you can see an embankment forming and it's still there. So if I just show you this, so the line would have headed through a cutting through that field there, as you saw in the picture, and then onto this embankment here. We're gonna hopefully try get up there and get a closer look at it. Right, so we're on a private lane which runs underneath the embankment. And as you can see, we've got an intact bridge, which there is not many between here and Leeds. So the embankment obviously was across the top there. So you've got Leeds in that direction. And then obviously up to the Gildersome Tunnel that way. This lane used to exist back in the day. You've now got the M621 motorway just behind it over there. So we've made it up onto the embankment. So again, that way is towards the Gildersome station. This is the uh, bridge we just walked underneath to get under here. You've got Gelded Road just over there and the Jewish cemetery there and onwards to Leeds that way. We're getting very close to the M621 now, which is just behind them trees there. But contrary to what people think, the M621 doesn't touch any of this route whatsoever. This route skirts just past it. It, it bends left in a minute, just before the motorway gets near it. And then it heads over the railway. You can still see the remains of the bridge where it crossed the railway, as the abutments still stand today. So it definitely, doesn't get close to the M621 or doesn't get swallowed by it anyway. But while we're here, we were hopefully going to find this and it's here. We found a, a gradient marker next to the track here. I was hoping it would still exist and it does. So the only remain pretty much on this line for a long, a long while anyway, apart from the obvious tunnels and uh, bridges. Yeah, nice little relic there. And we've just spotted these at the side of the embankment here. Some nice uh, railway sleepers, definitely original. You can see the bolt holes there. Uh, it's currently covering a manhole. But anyway, we've reached the end of the embankment here, but it would have continued into a cutting from here onwards. And there was a bridge right here where this lane, which is diverted now because of the motorway, would have gone underneath the railway here. Now, there is a, a bridge under the M621 in exactly the same place that you would have crossed underneath the railway, but now they've just leveled it out. But it would have continued that way into a cutting. And as you can see, at this point, the line slightly bent left from here. And the M621 is over there, bending right. So it got very close to the M621. And I mean very close, within, I don't know, 10, 20 feet. But the M621 never touched this part of the line. So here's the present day underpass to the M621. And like I said, directly in line with that, where the railway would have crossed here would have been another underpass through there. So I just brought you to a point where there would have been a bridge on this lane here. And you can see the embankment as it winds through the valley there and then curves towards me, away from the M621, which is now going that way. That's where there would have been a bridge or an underpass and the line would have continued underneath where I'm stood now. But as you can see, all landfilled, even on the other side. So it would have been, I don't know, 10, 15 feet down there in a cutting, heading that way. And directly behind those trees there is the main line. And it would have crossed there on a viaduct. So right where we are now would have been the start of the flying junction, the Farnley flying junction. So it would have split back there where the bridge was. And we've just spotted another couple of sleepers down here. And maybe some kind of stonework from the parapet of the bridge, maybe. We're not sure. Looks like it anyway. Yeah, we're pretty convinced that we're walking 
on the remains of the viaduct that used to cross the main line just over there. And you can hear the M621 roaring past there. So we've headed a bit further on and you can see how close it got to the M621 which is right there. It's just absolutely started tipping it down. But the viaduct abutments are somewhere just over here. So the line would have come from behind us and crossed the main line that way. Now this section of line that we're on would have been the up line from Leeds heading up this way and the down line has already curved off and joined the uh, main line just down there the Leeds to Huddersfield line. Okay so we found exactly what we're looking for there's the abutment and I know you love me saying that and then if you look on the other side over there you can see the other side but again this is the closest that it got to the M621 and you can see that over there at the back, in the background. So we think we're on the edge now of the down line towards the Huddersfield line which would be behind us. So it would have split off from the flying junction curved towards us. This is now landfill here. It would have been in this direction here and then met the main line just up here. So if you're wondering what the uh, Farnley Flying Junction was. I'll just quickly explain it. It's basically exactly that. It's a junction, a bit like a motorway today to keep the traffic moving. So instead of having junctions or T-junctions on railway lines where you have to cross the tracks to slow the traffic down, you have flyovers like a motorway. So you would have gone over the top of it and branched around and joined. But it was literally single track on either side. So the up line literally shot across here and bent probably a mile further around the back and joined the line further down and the down line literally joined right here and the gradient was a lot steeper on this one with it being shorter but it meant that the trains could keep moving with no stoppages on either line so it's worth mentioning as well like i said a second ago about the gradients the up line actually had a couple of curves put into it so like an s bend which made it slightly longer like i said it was probably a mile longer than this one just to give the trains a run up coming out of leeds up the hill towards the Gilderson tunnel that's why they did it whereas the down line all the way downhill doesn't make a difference the gradient was a lot steeper on this one but it didn't matter because it was all downhill so we've made it down to the track side so again you've got the live track to my left here and you've got Gelded Road just up there on that bridge and this is where the Leeds new line would have come in towards us and underneath this bridge here that you can see is still intact all fenced off now and totally uh, well, we can't get to it basically. It's just, it's like Raiders of the Lost Ark in there. But they used to come towards us here and then join the main line just behind us here. And then, just in front here, it would have branched off onto what is known as the Farnley Branch. But I'll tell you more about that when we get up there. Right, so it's a brand new day now from the last time we saw you in the video. Again, it's still wet and miserable, but we now stood at a section which would have been known as the Farnley Triangle or maybe the Wortley Triangle, we're not sure. And right here is right in the section where the Leeds New Line joined the main line and then branched back off into Leeds. And then just on the left here, there was a triangle of track because there was another branch line that left right where we are now and was called the Farnley Branch. And I'll show you a map of it now so you can get an idea of where we are and what we're looking at. But right in the middle of this triangle would have been a large engine shed as well, which would have been just behind me. And then this line was only a short branch that headed off up to a couple of industrial units further up and also a large colliery site, which was just at the end of this. So it was mainly for industrial traffic. Now, I'll just show you over the bridge. We're stood in the middle of a brand new housing development now. So the large engine shed that I showed you on the map would have been right here in front of us with the lines coming in from this side and we stood on a bridge on one side of the triangle now so the line on this side would have gone that way and that's towards the Leeds new line coming in from the flying junction and it would have also run at the back there behind the engine shed and then down that side as well so we stood right in the middle of the triangle now but as you can see it's all a brand new housing estate quite recent as well but we stood on this recently uh, restored or sandblasted bridge 
which looks really nice actually. I'll get you a better shot of it further around. So this is the underside of that bridge. And as you can see, it's in really good condition. Because of this house build here, it has been turned into like a feature and it's been restored and it is really nice actually. But yeah, this would have just carried a farmer's track up here. And there also used to be an old coal pit at the top of there in the 1800s. And then, yeah, the, the branch line basically would have come towards me here, around the back of these houses and then off up to Farnley. So this section here, we're at the bottom end of the triangle and this would have been the right hand side. And you can see where there used to be a bridge here as well, same as the other one. So you can see where the embankment abruptly ends there. And there would have been two abutments either side of this line here, obviously. I had to get that word in. And then it would have continued straight across that way to the uh, Farnley branch up there. So we're just heading out of the housing estate for away from the Triangle Junction. And we found this bridge here. I say found, we knew it was here. This was an underpass underneath the main lines here. Now, right above me on that bridge would have been seven tracks. So you had the Leeds New Line as it joined the main line here. The main line had three tracks in itself. And then also you had another three on this side, which were from the branch line here, which would have branched off. And the engine shed entrance would have been right in these trees here. So all the lines that are branched off into multiple lines into the engine shed. But as you can see, it's currently fenced off, so we can't get in there and show you, but it's no more than an underpass, that's all it is. And then there's an industrial estate on the other side. Right, we're currently stood on the A58 or Whitehall Road and the bridge known as the Dragon Bridge. That's what I think it's called anyway. Now right here, you've got the main line just behind me, which crosses under this bridge. But here is where the Leeds New Line would have also branched back off again off this main line. So just here, the Leeds New Line joined at the junction we were at a minute ago, ran alongside the main line to join the main line and then branched off again, right where this building is here. But what a lot of people don't know is that where this building is was also another railway station known as the Farnley and Wortley Station. Now this is not officially listed as a station on the Leeds New Line, but it is because the Leeds New Line branched off here and it, the platforms were here where this building is, not where the main line is. So it was on this line here. But I'm going to show you a picture now taken from here, looking this way at the station on the left and some of the old buildings on the other side there, which are still there today and a footbridge that used to cross the railway line. So it's hard to imagine now, but where we stood, the Leeds New Line would have left the station, the Farnley and Workley station, headed towards us in this uh, abandoned car park behind us now. And then straight forward through what is now a lot of porter cabins, but I'm presuming it would have been in a cutting there, lower down. And uh, this would have been a footbridge. It, today it's a, a, like a little footpath cut through, but you would have come down here and over the line on a footbridge. Right, so we've reached pretty much the end of the Leeds New Line. Now, there is a bit, of a, a bit of a debate going on as to where it actually ended. Now, to me, it joined the Holbeck Viaduct or the Farnley Viaduct, whatever you want to call it, and it headed off into Leeds. That was the Leeds New Line for me. But where it joins the main line back there, a lot of people say that that is the real end of the Leeds New Line. And it probably is true. Hence why the station, the Farnley and Wortley station that I was talking about a minute ago, isn't mentioned as a station on the Leeds New Line because it officially ended just before that. But anyway, we stood now back at the start of the embankment that joins the Holbeck or the Farnley Viaduct heading into Leeds. Now, as you will know, if you've watched my channel for a long time, we've already covered this all the way down to Leeds Station pretty much. So if you want to check it out, check out the uh, Holbeck Viaduct video that I did where I walked all the way along the viaduct with track pieces remaining on the bridges as well, all the way into Leeds. So we're just gonna head a bit further down and then we'll call it a day. But before we do, Richie and John, I've just found a load of trinkets up here. <laughs> They're like a bloody squirrel with the nuts, these two. We've got some clinker here from the firebox on the engine and also some little pieces down here. Go on, John, what are these? 
You'll know better it's than the me. Corner of a uh, chair. The corner of a chair. Yeah, go on, Rich. What are those? What are those? They're just pins, are they? Pins. Yeah. Simple as that. There's lots and lots of relics up here. So if you head that way, you'll join back to the main line where it used to leave where the station was. And then you've got the embankment all the way down here. And then it joins the viaduct a bit further down. Like I said, we've already covered that. But anyway, let's just push on a bit more and then we'll see where we can get to. So where we are now is the Gelded Road Bridge. So if you look over the edge of here is Gelded Road into Leeds. As you can see, and we stood right on top of the bridge and you've still got the ballast down and a bit further down here there's still tracks laid down just at the bottom of here but again we'd have to go on the viaduct so if you want to see that check out my Holbeck viaduct video Hello Bob <laughs> Right so we've reached the end of the Leeds New Line and it is absolutely hammering it down again but we're not bothered are we? No, we we're plodding on but anyway thank you very much for watching this fantastic series we've really really enjoyed doing this one but a big thank you to Richie who's been with us since the first video heading all the way through the Leeds New Line so if you want to check him out he's on the Leeds New Line Appreciation Group Facebook page something like that that's right the link in the description below and a big thanks to John as well for coming down and joining us on the last two videos you got anything to say Rich? Just like to say uh, thank you for everybody's interest it's been uh, it's been great doing this project with Darren and I hope we've all enjoyed it thank you it's been brilliant anything John? Thanks for watching there you go <laughs> but anyway I'll see you in the next video next week please like the video any comments below and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next series wherever that will be but it's a bye from us three we'll see you soon bye, bye. <laughs>